broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round. You can't find a fighter, but I see it in it, so we can walk it out. Peace and love, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you um, unmute yourselves briefly so that way I can know that the sound is coming in clear? I hear you loud and clear. Hear me loud and clear? Okay. I hear you loud and clear. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So good to see your faces. Welcome, welcome to Somewhere in the Rainbow. This is February 22nd, and our topic is Express Yourself. I am Rashida Sharif. I'm the host of these conversations. All of the conversations are taken from my book, Somewhere in a Rainbow. If you haven't gotten it yet, go to my website, which is rashidasharif.com, and purchase the book, okay? The topics are in no particular order. We just feel the spirit, and we just go ahead and you know, get started with whatever conversation we want to get started from month to month, okay? So, express yourself. How do you express yourself? That's a really, really important um, question to think about, and especially if you feel as though you're expressing yourself to the fullest in this day and age. When as a child, we are kind of pushed in a certain direction, which opens the door for us to express ourselves in that particular direction. And then maybe one day we get, we get a certain age and we find that we don't want to express ourselves like that. And we are working at a job and the job is pulling us in a certain direction. And then we become so stressed out and uncomfortable with that job because that's not how we really want to express ourselves either, okay? Then if you have a group of friends that you associate with and, you know, friends pretty much have the same type of thinking and do the same type of things, you're with these friends and all of a sudden when you realize that, hmm, these are not the type of friends I want to be with because they're not reflecting what's going on inside of me. So express yourself. Express yourself. It's a very important topic because we strive to express our authentic self. And what that means is that it's not going to happen overnight, but as we evolve through life, it eventually will happen in terms of you expressing your true authentic self. Now, me, for example, I'll start with me. I'll kick it off. Um, I'm expressing myself today as a holistic artist. And I had to come to that realization throughout my life journey. Now, this is for me, a holistic artist. I incorporate art with everything I do. I dance, I sing. Some people probably think I can't sing, but I sing. <laughs> I'm an author, I'm an author. Um, I, make, I make trees, um, little crystal trees. Um, I have them over there somewhere, but I don't have one right here by me, which I should have one by me, but I don't, but that's okay. 
And um, as a young adult, which I still am a young adult, Maria's choice was to become an educator. I was an exceptional student educator. Um, I was also a therapeutic counselor. I was a substance abuse counselor. But you want to know something? Even with my career, all of the um, things as far as incorporating art was involved. And I didn't realize that until I gave it some serious thought one day. You know, I say, as an educator, I used art. That's why I loved exceptional student education because I was able to get out the box and not just be confined in the box of, of the trad so-called traditional teaching. And as far as counseling, of course, I'm that alternative counselor. I was that, that alternative um, therapist, okay? So you've heard from me a little bit. I'm expressing myself through art. I'm a holistic artist. This is where I've evolved to in my 60s. Okay, I'm in my 60s, my mid 60s. And I'm very happy to say. So if you wanna unmute yourself um, and, and, and just jump right in the conversation, you can. And I think your little box will light up to let you know, let us know that someone is, um, you know, speaking. Hello, can anyone hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, Mom. Welcome, welcome, blessings, welcome, everyone. Welcome, <laughs> <laughs> Express yourself. Express yeah, yourself. Yeah. Yes, I know I'm a little bit late. Um, I missed the beginning part. Um, not sure what it is that I wanted to say, but I know, you know, just listening to you, piggybacking off of you, uh, the way that I express myself is in a way that helps keep me calm. Like I play, um, I do a lot. <laughs> It's a lot that I do. I like to twirl. And when I'm twirling, I have to have all my pretty dresses, my pretty skirts on when I'm twirling because it just makes me feel free. Mm -hmm. um, I play a lot of music. I do uh, play on an online radio station. And I get a lot of compliments from a lot of people because they tell me that the stuff that I play, they don't really hear anymore. And the reason why I play it, because someone asked me, well, why do you play all that old stuff? Like, where did you learn all that music? Mm -hmm. Growing up, I was always observant of a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I was always observant of was music. For some, reason, for some reason, music just entered my ears and it just stayed imprinted in my brain. <laughs> and <laughs> I, you know, that's my happy space. That's my happy space playing music because it just takes me and it keeps me at a happy space and time where... I had no worries, not a care in the world, didn't have to worry about bills, didn't have to worry about relationships, <laughs> didn't have to worry about kids, finances, school, educate, all of that stuff, the pandemic, didn't have to worry about a lot. So it's just things that I do um, to keep me comforted, you know, uh, and I, I see a lot of other people that I've grown up with used uh, things like alcohol and other you know, things mm -hmm. to comfort them. And I'm just so glad that I didn't go that route. So I'm addicted to, right now, I'm in a place where I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually addicted to making me happy. Mm -hmm. And making me happy is either dancing, spending time with my daughter, playing music, and writing. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. So let me ask you, Benita, when did you realize what at what age? When did you first realize that music was your 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 happy place, your your place that your go to place um, to keep you calm and, and grounded? Believe it or not, I was probably about five years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I had experienced being molested, mm -hmm. and before that, I always loved music. Anyway, it was just like. One of my aunts at her house, she always played Teddy Pendergrass. I was like three or four years old uh -huh. listening to Teddy. And I remember being three and four years old. Anytime I would disappear, my mother would panic like, oh, my God, where's Vanita? Everybody's looking up the block and around the corner. And I'm sitting in my, in my aunt's house at her table <laughs> <laughs> listening to Teddy Pendergrass, just sitting at the kitchen table. And like not a care in the world. It's just something about music that just kept me calm. And mm -hmm. it just took me places. And it gave me this 
you know, I just had vivid imaginations even. That's what pushed me into writing because these imaginations I wanted to see in print. So I started writing about these imaginations and it turned into poetry and then it turned to me working on a book. Mm -hmm. So I was say at age five, even, you know, right after um, I experienced what I experienced mm -hmm. um, to take, I don't know if I can say take back that power because I didn't know what taking back that power was about at age five and someone's invading your space right. at that age. So music, yeah. I know what I'll do to get my mind off of it. I'll go play my mother's soundtrack, the eight track to spark. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. So from, yeah, from age five, that's when mm. I was always in tune to music. I wanted to hear what some, I want to hear that song. What's that song? So mm -hmm. I can tell you about doo-wop. I can tell mm -hmm. you about gospel. I can tell you about hip hop. I can tell you about R&B. I can tell you about jazz. I can tell you about some, some opera. <laughs> but yeah, but it's just, it's just music has always been something to take me away from the stress. That's good. Thank you for sharing that. And I really appreciate you sharing that extra dimension of you um, um, experience that molestation as a child, you know. Um, yeah. We'll reserve that for another topic, it, it, you know, if you feel comfortable talking about it sometime in the future. We will, oh, yeah. like I said, this book is, is, is the conversations are in the book. So mm, I'll have my copy soon. Well. Yes, that, <laughs> that topic is also in the book, okay? Thank you for okay. that. Thank you. Yes, thank you for listening. <laughs> the floor is open. It's not on mute. Okay. If you want to see, just un, un, unmute your mic. Yeah. It's not muted. Okay, I can hear you, Joy. Okay. Um, have you found that your ways of expression have changed throughout your life or has it always been the same? Is that a question for me? Yes. Yeah, it has changed, but the core, the core of the um, expression in its most authentic form has not changed. I can remember as a little girl gravitating to color um, as young as three years old. You know, I claimed um, two little twins who were dressed in some pretty pastel little rompers, and it was the colors that attracted me. And um, making, um, using fabric swatches from my grandmother's, our grandmother's back porch, you know, the, her quilt swatches and, and working with color and just working with creativity and, and creating things with my hands um, and just being able to rest in creativity. And being that artist, it has evolved over time, but it, that core is still there. It's, it's still there, it's dominant. And what about, I think hmm? what about you? I have always been word. I've always had like many, many thoughts. And it's like just like the ocean out there is water. Mm -hmm. In my mind, it's in like an ocean of words. And I'm finding though, as I grow older. I don't speak as well as I used to face to face. I'm good if I have my camera there and it's me, just me. But when it comes to interpersonal relationships, I would prefer to write. It's almost like you can tape up my mouth and I could just, and, and that's, that's crazy. I don't understand. Unless it's people that I'm really close to. So something is shifting. That's why I was wondering yeah. if it's changing also for you, you know? Yeah. Well, it, 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 it evolved. That's the best I can say. It, it has evolved. I've always gravitated to color. I've always gravitated to nature. The sun was my friend when I was a yeah. little girl. I mean, I, I was sun gaze um, for, for hours on end. And um, creating things, making things out of nothing has always been my forte. 
And um, it, it, it just came easy for me. But as an adult, it has evolved um, in so many dimensions. Um, my whole lifestyle in terms of what I do and how I do it um, is, is one, bit, one big art. It's just art. I just see it. I just see it in everything that I do, even, even the way I talk, you know, the rhythm in my voice, um, the way I write. The way I chose to write this book is not traditional, it's non-traditional. Um, you know, so everything that I've done since way back as, as young as three years old that I can remember, that holistic artist effect has evolved. Now you have um, some children who grow up um, and they're being molded by their parents, by their teachers, you know, by, like I said earlier, by their co-workers, by their friends, and they never can break out and, and, and express their, their authentic self because they don't know how. But sometimes if you just sit still within yourself and, and realize that, okay, um, something is not feeling right and allow yourself to feel what you really want to feel and, and express that and express that. Um, it, it, this is why people leave jobs, you know, 25 right. year jobs, they've been on the job and, and all along they've been feeling like something is missing, something is missing, but you know, the money's good, it pays the bill and so forth. But at some point in their life, you know, um, if they get to that point of, 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 of not being afraid and, and just challenging themselves, they will um, tap into their authentic self. And I, I kind of believe that, um, that authentic self is there from, from birth. It is okay. from birth. And like Vanita was saying earlier, um, you know, at five years old, she found herself in music. And that's what, that's what saved her life then and, it's, and it continues to save her life now, okay? You guys have your mics um, muted. Anytime you want to jump in the conversation, by all means, feel free to just jump in the conversation. I'll jump in. Peace, everyone. Hope peace, everyone is doing well. Happy Monday. <laughs> um, I missed the beginning, unfortunately, and I apologize for coming in late. Um, I'm assuming the topic is um, expressing yourself. How do you express yourself? Um, Honestly, it depends on the season. Um, a lot of my expression is to uh, just being real joy. <laughs> um, I express myself a lot by cleaning, um, organizing. Um, so I'm not one for words like my mom, like joy. I'm very um, quiet and um, hello. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> I gotta be me, but um, yeah, mostly through cleaning, um, organizing, just making things look beautiful. Um, it's the way I express myself. Um, again, not really one for words when it comes to talking to someone, unfortunately. Um, that's probably one of my um, huge, um, <laughs> huge things I need to work on when, as far as relationships is the communication part because I'm tend to um, not communicate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> verbally, anyway. <laughs> verbally anyway and for someone who don't know me a new you know someone I'm just meeting they don't know how, how to um, verbalize or how to communicate you know what I mean so it may come as a shock like oh my gosh she just shut down she was no I gotta go through a, a full process <laughs> and then if it's worth verbalizing I will do so and um yeah and usually that's and I like to write too of course um I do a lot of writing but my writing I keep to myself I don't share um I do write um little short stories I do write poems um so I do a lot of expression but again it's yeah Joy I know you look shocked no one don't know that because I don't share it because it's it's personal it's it's for me and me only you know what I mean it's just things I need to get out of my chest and um, put it in the air, but not necessarily wanting to share it with anyone. So I, I do have a stack full of journals um, from years and years ago. <laughs> so that's another one for me as well. Thanks for listening. So let Tune me ask in. you a question. I have a question. Yes. Is, is there something that you do um, um, that um, in the way of expressing yourself that's happy? Happy? Oh yeah, I'm everybody. Because I know you, I know you. 
so that's why I'm asking. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm asking. I, um, I'm happy all day, every day. But yeah. one thing that I do, um, like Vanita, is music. I, I do love music. I do love singing, though I cannot sing. Um, but one of my favorite songs is Pocket Full of Sunshine, if anyone know it. I got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. You know, because sometimes you got to chase negative people away. And when they hear happy thoughts and happy songs, not thoughts, but happy songs, happy music, it tend to rub off on that person next to you. You can't be upset if someone is singing a pocket full of sunshine all freaking day. You know what I mean? So that's, an <laughs> that's another thing I do and hum. Of course, I hum um, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so those, those are my happy things. I love the hum. I love to sing. Oh, and um, since you got me started, mom, um, movies. I, I love just reenacting different parts from movies. That's another thing I do as well. And I will just do it out of nowhere. Um, I will just do a skit and that's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's another dimension to your expression. That's another dimension to your, your expression. Indeed. Yeah, and that's your happy place. That's your happy space. Everybody has Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's my la la land, as I like <laughs> to call it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> I don't know how to mute me back. It's going to take a minute. It's the if mic anybody want to talk, go ahead. It's just going to take a while for me. The little microphone. I see it. I see my name. Don't, the don't, lower don't left bottom me. of the. It should be at the lower I left see, bottom. I, I got she'll, it. She'll find it. She'll, <laughs> she'll, she'll eventually find it. It'll take her a couple of hours. <laughs> so anybody. That's can, funny. Yeah. That, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. I was going to say that's funny that she mentioned um, reenacting movies because I do the same thing. And it's so crazy because I've been doing that for a very long time probably since high school just reenacted just, like all of a sudden I'll just be like do you know why I'm here today do you like from the breakfast club I don't know if anybody ever seen that movie that 80s film the breakfast club with the kids oh yeah the that's a classic and had to <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and, yeah that's one of my favorites to, to, to reenact you're like Claire so <laughs> what was it that Bender said so you know I and it's crazy because when I, when I had kids, like I have a son and a daughter, my son wound up doing the same thing. <laughs> he winds up doing the same thing that I do. He'll come in the room, like he'll come, if he's over at my house or whatever, visiting, he'll come in my room like, do you know why I'm here today? You know, like just doing something. <laughs> and my daughter, she's, she's starting to do the same thing. My, where's this from? But she does hers, she's, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not going to call her weird. She's very, very talented in certain areas. Like she came in my room to, she had on the, what is that? The, the movie with the people were wearing the masks and they were just killing people, freely ki killing people um, and not being charged for it. But she has one of those masks and she came in my room walking back, like walking on all fours, like in a bend over. Like to try to scare me. What movie is that? <laughs> and I was like, okay, yeah. So she's a little different <laughs> in how she expresses. So yeah, but I, I get that. That yeah, that's a good way to movie reenactment. <laughs> so wait, I, I have one for Benita. Benita? Uh-huh. Whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming to I forgot America. comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Some good going? tension breakers. Good tension breakers. Stress <laughs> releasers. <laughs> you can't be stressed out <laughs> <hogging> like that. <laughs> no, but she knows what. Do you know the movie? Whatever yeah, you coming like. to America. Yes, again, my favorite movie. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I know yeah, the whole yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, so I guess started. I do that too. I guess I do that too. I, I, know, I know the whole movie. Started. All of it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You got them started. You got them started. Yep, yep. She sure does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody jump in there. How do you express yourself, somebody? Unmute yourself, Miriam. Unmute yourself. Unmute I'm going to jump in. I got it, my I'm going to jump yeah. in. I'm going to jump Benita. in. Benita! Benita! <laughs> we go back <laughs> since the dance of our days, and that's how I still express myself through dancing. Benita, yes. you, you remember you used to get me in the cloud with you? Absolutely. <laughs> we 
like, you got a little sister. This is my baby. That's over right 30 here. years ago. <laughs> so, seriously, dancing has definitely been my stress reliever for as long as I can remember as a little girl. Um, Benita, my brother Hassan, we used to go to Zanzibar. I used to get in on the age because they knew everybody. They had the hookup. I felt so safe, protected, loved. But Nita didn't play. Like, I had, like, I was just good, like, good in North New Jersey. Uh, I'm getting a chill just thinking about it. Um, and then it ventured off to other places. But you caught me dancing on a Saturday night most most Saturday nights. If I was able to, I was there. Um, and I think that was the biggest impact of the COVID, just not being able to go out and dance next to people and socialize and just that whole, that vibe. It's just a whole vibe, a good vibe. And um, that's definitely how I express myself. And right next to that is my mouth. My mouth is my blessing and it's my curse. I will use my vocals to express myself. And I've been doing that since I've been a little girl. It has got me praises and it has got me a lot of consequences. <laughs> but it's okay. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them all. And then you have the facts of life. <laughs> and that's what you have. But I love you guys. It's great to see you. I have a seven-year-old son and it's a Monday. So I'm going to be in and out. But I just wanted to let um, everyone know it's just great. Um, on a Monday, you know, just seeing the positive energy, feeling the vibe through um, Zoom. Mommy, you always doing your thing. I'm so proud of you. you like my shero. You know, you just a beast. I can't keep up with you at all. <laughs> and I'm not even going to try anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, and that was it. I don't know if I had to say anything else, Mom, but I think I used my vocals accordingly and expressed myself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I bear witness to that. I bear witness to that. And you <laughs> use your vocals quite well. I recognize that in you as a little girl. You used to always call Bell Telephone for me to get the phone um, extended so they wouldn't shut it off. <laughs> you, had that, you had that adult sound and you had that articulation. You was the child that did that. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. Yes. Love you guys. <laughs> I guess I could jump in. Hey, everyone. Hey, hey mommy. Everybody's nice to see everyone. Um, how do I express myself? I would say through beauty culture. You know, I'm always, if, it's, if I'm not trying to make myself look pretty, I'm always trying to make somebody else look pretty and feel pretty from the inside out. And I would say through my um, wicked sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> she know what I mean by yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so that would be me. Wicked sister humor <laughs> and um, just making people feel pretty. I like to um, um, tap into people, beauty, inner beauty and outer beauty, and that makes me happy. Okay. What happened to the picture? <laughs> So Shakira, I know I know that to be true, and I am commenting on that because um, when you were before you were even walking, you were doing my hair when I had some hair. <laughs> <laughs> you would be on my back. You would be like maybe two years old with a comb, just comb it. Oh my God! Sometimes you would comb it so hard, and um, then you would put a lot of barrettes in it. You was very good with your hands. You know who who, who does that at a, as a baby? And, um, did all your sister's hair. You know, you corn braided all your sister's hair. You did the neighborhood, the, the children on the block, you did their hair, you know. I mean, so always wanting somebody to be beautiful on the outside and understanding that that's a reflection of helping them to feel good on the inside. Because when you when you keep yourself groomed and, and, and beautiful, it lifts your spirit, you know. Of course, it's not going to always do that, but Nine times out of ten, it will, you know. Like, um, I got a little bit of lipstick on, and I think I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I see you, I see you. <laughs> got me some earrings, so, so it's making me sit a certain way. I'm just using this as an example. You I know, see where you going? <laughs> yeah, you know, it makes it makes you do things differently. You know, you walk differently, you talk differently. So yeah, thank you for that, Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, so I noticed listen to, listening to everyone, um, I think people tend to express themselves either outwardly 
uh, like very extrovertedly, like Miriam going out, being around people, uh, talking, communicating with other people. And then on the other side of that, you can be very uh, introverted, like Yaya and like me, I'm very introverted. Uh, so I think I express myself through, um, I like learning choreography. Um, I like listening to a lot of music that ha that I can see a, mu a video where they have very, uh, you know, good choreography that I can, you know, sit and learn. Well, not sit and learn, but stand and learn. Um, I like listening to music, all types of music. And I also like, uh, I play instrument, I play the violin. And I actually took the violin out of my closet yesterday, mommy. And I started to play. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> good job. I do need to go get it fixed because one of the strings is just gone. So I was practicing only on like three strings. But um, yeah, I think I like, I express myself through playing music because uh, I don't really, I'm not big on communicate. Well, I know how to communicate, but I'd rather not. I'm very like quiet. I'd rather sit and listen uh, instead of talking and being the center of attention. So music, music is kind of like that outlet playing music because you don't have to speak to anybody when you're playing music. Um, you're just kind of in your zone. It's just you, the music that's in front of you and your instrument. Um, so yeah, expressing myself in ways like that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm so I'm so happy that you you're playing the violin again because you were really good. You know, you played it for so many years, and I'm just glad you picked it up again. That's that's really that's really good. That's really good. I'm happy about that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. What can I say to that? I mean, that was that was very well expressed. That was very well expressed. And um, I wish I was able to play an instrument. <laughs> I think my mouth is my is my instrument, though, you know, in terms of that. But um, yeah, I'm trying not to dominate the conversation. Dominate. No, I don't want to. Don't want to. Chi Chi. Sorry, Ma, I just got to tell you something. No, please do. I, I have a song I want you to learn. Okay. <laughs> you know what it's song? from? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Pride and Prejudice. Of I'm course. Gonna, it's the song when, um, I'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> so far, when I've been listening, I've been listening to everybody, just like you, Chi Chi, you know, you listen, you, you, you picked up on the inner and outer um, type expressions of people. Some some people are uh, more dominant with you know being objective. Some people are more dominant with being you know that inner, that subjective. You know, using things from the inside. Um, but at the end of the day, um, everybody has expressed something that's kept them grounded in a good way. And I think we we discovered that at a very very young age, just like Vanita was saying, and Shakira, and and Yaya, everybody that spoke, Miriam, everybody that spoke. If you can just think back as far as you can, um, I, I think you would discover that um, you was doing this as a very young child. And sometimes as time go on, you kind of get away from it a little bit. And you get away from it because of life and, and the things you have to do in life to, to maintain your, your living, you know, as far as you're working and taking care of your children and so forth and so on. But at some point in your life, something that you were very passionate about or something that really kept you grounded as a child that you stopped doing that really made you happy and it was really a safe place to be, I think that you're going to revisit it one day. You, you, a lot of people do revisit it. You know, like I was saying earlier, that's why a lot of people, uh, some people just all of a sudden just quit their job after being on a particular job for 20, 20 years, 15 years, they all of a sudden say, this is not what I want to do. This is not me. I'm not feeling this. And they, um, you know, start a whole new um, life of, of doing something that they've been holding on to and, 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 and it's been like a burning desire that they've been wanting to do for so, so long. Anybody um, ever think about something like that? Anybody, you know, feel as though they're doing something today, but they really want to be doing something else tomorrow and they're kind of like thinking about doing it, but 
not able to, to take that step yet for whatever reason. Anybody feel like that? Have you ever been in a situation like that? Yes, Joy. I'm, I'm actually a licensed teacher with a lot of years in the classroom. And, you know, my cousins on this phone, they know um, I'm not going back into another classroom. So right now my life is in transition and people on the outside are looking at me and they're afraid. But I figure like this, if, if life is like a hill and you get to the top, then you start going down. I'm on that other side and it is time for me to express who I really am. Mm -hmm. And that is where I am. And it's funny because you said afraid of might not be able to do it. When you make a sincere effort, the universe mm -hmm. reaches down and helps you because the strangest things are happening. The people who are coming to me and today I made a connection that I wanted, but I didn't think was possible. And I'm mm -hmm. like, <gasps> so, you know, I sometimes get nervous, like talking and stuff like that. Um, I do fight anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but um, I, this one thing that I know for sure, I am not afraid to live the rest of my life authentically as who I am, yes. expressing <laughs> who I am. And I feel that that's in alignment with the purpose of why I'm here. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I waited, I, I mean, I moved here the first day of the pandemic shut down. I mean, <laughs> it's been out there, but everything is finally starting to come into order. And um, I think I have more of a loss for words when I'm trying to think instead of just being authentic, but I don't trust everything that I'm saying. That's why I think, and that's when I get like tied up. You see what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. like you can just talk. Miriam, she can just talk. Shakira, oh my God. You guys are brilliant, like educated speakers. I have to think about that. You know, I have to think first. That's why a lot of times I prefer to be in the background or in front of my phone when it's just me in my bathroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm glad you're in the space that you're in as far as, um, you know, pursuing what makes you happy, your authentic self. I think um, last year with this whole COVID-19 situation, a lot of people have been pushed into a corner to like really evaluate who they really are and what they can do that can keep them um, grounded or keep them um, alive. And a lot of people have been gravitating to their authentic self because it's already there. What you, what you really want to do or who you really are destined to be in terms of your life purpose is already there. And sometimes we are pushed into a situation where we need to just look at it differently. Um, I remember leaving my job, you know, teaching in, I think it was 2000 and, um, 13, 14, I just, just left my job. I just, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done and I'm, because I'm an artist. I've left my job plenty of times. I never really wanted to, to be that traditional teacher, although I was, but I always left a, a, a door open for me to get out if I needed to get out. And I did, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm still doing what I've been doing pretty much like you asked me earlier, Joy. I've been doing pretty much what I've been doing all my life, but it has evolved just like a river um, doesn't flow in a, in a linear way. It, it you know, moves and, it, and, it, and it's like a rhythm to it. And it goes up and it goes down, it goes slow, it goes fast. That's pretty much how my life has been in terms of that authenticity of evolving to my true holistic artistic self in every aspect of the world, every aspect of the world. Mm -hmm. So is, has anybody else felt as though they um, that feel as though they want to do something, but they're not doing it, but they know that's in their heart and, and you know, they really, really want to do this thing, but something is like really holding you back a little bit? Well, I can say I, I'm already doing it um, at this point, but yes, I have. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wanted to relocate to Atlanta um, for years, literally for years, but mm -hmm. I always... Um, 
put something in the way, not that things came up naturally. I kind of made things come up to, to stop me from progressing and, and moving and doing what I wanted to do. I had every reason under the sun for years to um, not relocate. And then one morning it just hit me last, um, in December, um, no, November, excuse me, it was November. Um, it just hit me when I woke up one morning I'm not happy here. Why am I still here? I was in a beautiful home. Um, I loved my, the house I was in. I got to wake up to see the deer playing, the rabbits playing. I mean, awesome. But you leave my land, you know, it was something totally different when you drove through the neighborhood and that type of thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I was at peace inside of the house, but outside of the house, it just wasn't... Um, what I wanted in life. So I'm um, finally in a place um, where I, I just said F it and I did it. And I think I get a lot of that from my mom, of course, that gun hole <laughs> attitude. Um, when you say F it and just nothing else matters at that moment. And you got to get to that point, I guess. Everyone has a point, their breaking point, I guess. And I, I, I reached mine and now I'm here and I'm blessed. I'm truly blessed. I mean, I cannot have asked for a um, a more joyful experience, a happier experience. I mean, God is with me. That, I mean, it's not no other words, I guess, besides to say God is with me. Every day I wake up in a place I want to be at. Every day I go to a job that I like to be at. Even mm -hmm. my part-time job, I enjoy being at. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I'm I'm truly blessed um, every single day. And yeah. I'm happy that I had the courage to do what I did. Because everyone doesn't have courage yeah. but I'm happy that my mom is who she is because she made me who I am and when I say F it it's just F it and you, you gotta do it you just gotta do it you gotta do it it is what it is even if you gotta leave your sisters your family um behind and I it killed me to, and that was one of the reasons that I didn't want to move um I kept saying my family I, I we're very close as everyone on this call knows um so to move further away from my sisters from my brother from my little dragon um Brittany you know what I mean it just was really hard to do it but at the end of the day I know I had to do it I just had to follow my heart and I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to do it yeah yeah that's that's good that's good I, I can look at your face when I see your face um when we do the um the FaceTime on the telephone I can see that you look so happy and and it's not like fake happiness you know like you send me nope. on your you, you send me a picture of yourself and your eyes everything is so different now you, and and that's when you're, mm -hmm. you you really begin to shine as we used to say you got oh, yeah. your eye on you got your shine oh shine. yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Ma. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Mommy, if I had to say, um, if I could be doing something different, um, let's see. If in my own little world, <laughs> if I could close my eyes and just voila, I would be this flamboyant designer. You know, I always love, <laughs> I mean, radical. So I'm going to probably be one of those older ladies, mature ladies at about, <laughs> and I'll uh, have this, old, this, this flamboyant line of clothing and, you know, just something just radical from, you know, because I'm, I'm an artist by nature. And so I can see me, whether it's interior decorating or just something dealing with fashion, you know, I know that it will probably pull out, you know, my hand right now inside because I'm, I am doing what I love to do, which is empowering, you know, tr um, young women. However, the creative side of me is saying, you know, it's like a bird in a cage. That's probably why I got a bunch of birds tattooed on me. You know, <laughs> I would love to just be a, you know, one of those designers or whatever, you know. So I'm going to move towards that because, you know, I, you know, for those who don't know, I was tapping to, into that when we were really on lockdown and, you know, I was working from home or whatever, making all types of stuff, buying stuff from Amazon. I think we all did that and just buying all types of mess and creating and creating and creating. And so that's, I think, mommy, that's what I would do. And everybody on the panel, I would become, get my second win. No, no it'd probably be my fourth win. Actually, I did a few things. Um, that would be my fourth one. I would be a, well, I mean, somebody that's on a magazine and Oprah had me on her show, and, you know, I'm just in full character for those who know me, full character. I mean, you would be like Shakira is fun, 
This is not Shakira. I would change my name and everything. <laughs> that would be I. <laughs> I can certainly see that. I can certainly see that. We tease you from time to time, you know, about the rhyme songs and so forth. But you are the jack of all trades when it comes to that because you you have a degree in architect, right? You know, so you always want to des design and create things, and that's still that that's still an um, extension of the beauty world. Beauty it's still is who you are. But you're taking it like Joy asked me earlier. Um, have I evolved? You know, she didn't put it like that, but, but in essence, when she said, "Have I evolved?" with who I who I am and so forth. And so, you know, yeah, you evolving with that whole world of beauty. You know, it just didn't start with the doing the hair, the cosmetology license. It's evolving to something one something else. You know, it's like that river is expanding. And that's really beautiful. Thank you, mommy. And can I just add joy? I feel like you are one of the most articulate persons that I have ever ran across. So you may not give yourself credit you speak very well. Like I find myself mad looking at your YouTube videos. I mean, they make me laugh. They're inspirational. I mean, you remind me of my mother, actually. I was like, wow, she's so much like mommy. You, you could tell like you're, you know, you cut, you're cut from the same cloth, you know, and Joy know what I meant by that. And interwoven with that divine thread. Joy, you feel me on that one. So I feel like you are not giving yourself enough credit when it comes to that very a uh, true orator and you know in full form and in character mommy she remind me of you so much like that is your niece i second that i second that in terms of her articulation and her able her ability to express herself in so many different types of ways you know Absolutely. that's the art within itself you know like okay you do you this today you that tomorrow you this i mean that's that's acting. That's good acting. That's good drama. That's good, That's good communication. <laughs> or ADHD. Well, that's okay. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We, we can claim that too. <laughs> we so I'm going to use the word Yaya used for, for her transition. She said courage. And mm -hmm. um, it does take courage to make a, a bold change, a bold move. And I guess, um, honestly, besides all the um, extraness, I truly love teaching. I love teaching math specifically. I've been in love with math since fifth grade. I love solving problems. Um, that's part of the reason I like to speak up. Most of the times I'm in a meeting or something, about 80, 85% of people will wait, even like on a Zoom, like no one will say anything. So I'm a problem solver. I'm going to say something. It doesn't have to be the correct answer. I'm cool with that. Math stands for mistakes allow thinking to happen. So my courage has been up my personal, um, personal, very personal life as far as romantically. Uh, my therapist several years ago challenged me to no matter what, stick it, stick it out for 90 days unless it's something abusive, toxic, but like just keep a friendship going with a male that you're attracted to, you have chemistry with, but you don't be the one, her words were self-sabotage. Um, and get just get to know the person and get to know how you will be in a relationship. I haven't done that yet. I it just I always a fight or flight is my motto. So in that case I flight because I haven't learned how to fight for a healthy relationship with a man. Um, even with my husband, one can argue I could have tried longer than a year. Most people do, for whatever the reason may be. I mean, some people have been dealing with extreme situations for a long time. I don't advocate that. However, did I really do my best to give it my all? You know, one can argue on either side of the coin. But for me, I would like the courage of not um, disposing men as if they're not needed. My son needs a father. I would love to fill that boy. I need a partner. I need a helpmate. I need someone to go through life with me. Um, I am into men, so I would like a man to be there. I want to have someone to sleep in the bed with every night. And I'm okay with saying that at 46. Um, it's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength to know your needs. And I have needs that need to be met regularly. And they're not being met. And, and we need to work on it. It's sad. But no, in all seriousness, I need to have the courage to stick it through in a real, in a healthy, even like the friendship binding part. I'm not even talking about intimacy or, you know, when to get that deep. 
but 90 days is my challenge to myself. I think I gave Kalula the same challenge because we both, if you don't mind me, Kalula sharing, we both will cut you off in the New York minute. I mean, like if you look at us wrong, we cutting you off. But um, there's also something that's not okay with that too. And no matter what, what relationship you're trying to build, it's going to take work. No matter whether it's your siblings, your parents, your, your child, OMG, if I can cut Matthew off, but I can't. But I want to a lot of times, but I'm not. I'm not going to leave him by the fire station because he's too old. I'm not going to give him up. But I want that same type of fight in me for a for love interest. So that's what I'm, that's the change I need to make in my life. I'm good with my finances, my career and all that. I can live with it. Being alone until I'm 80, nah, not an option. I'm going to have to find me a whole husband soon. So that's where I need courage at. That was very, very well put. Thank you. That, that was good. I, that, I mean, I, that, that's I right there. That's it. So we have about 10 more minutes left. If anybody um, want to speak that haven't spoke yet, and then we can just, um, you know, continue on with the dialogue and as we've been doing the conversation. Does anyone um, want to talk about how they express themselves that haven't spoke yet? We will give you an opportunity now to go ahead because we got some topics, other topics surrounding expressing yourself. Okay. I'm practicing the pause. My daughter, Chi Chi, told me, Mommy, give people an opportunity to respond before you jump right in. Because <laughs> my, I, as I said before, my mind travels like Mercury, the planet. Everybody has a planet that they can associate their thinking with. <laughs> Mine is Mercury. So um, I'll, I'll pause for a second to allow someone to speak. Hey, hey. Hello. Yeah. What up? What's up, chat? Brian? Hold on one second. Damn. All right, there we go. Hello. Hi. We hey, what's up, y'all? Hold on. How you doing? We got multiple devices up. All right, can you hear me better? Yes. Yes. Oh, what up? I'm good. I'm good. Y'all sound good, man. I'm loving the dialogue. I just wanted to say, you know, I know we was talking about um, expressing ourselves, but, you know, I just wanted to say on the flip side of that, I I, uh, I notice as I get older, you know, I observe more and um, I actually speak less. And, you know, I feel like it's definitely helped me out a lot because um, it just, you know, it helps with my perspective, you know what I'm saying? Especially with just uh, jumping the gun and... Um, you know, assuming a lot of things when it comes to people in such certain situations. But um, I personally have gone more introvert as I've gotten older, mm -hmm. which, you know, at some point I thought it was an issue, but I enjoy it, man. You know, I, I personally have been um, in jail before, you know, for a short period of time, and it taught me a lot of lessons. It also helped me understand more about myself and um, just being okay with my thoughts and um, knowing how to... Uh, how to, uh, I guess, condition myself and um, just not drive myself crazy, but just sitting back and just observing more and saying less, I've, I've noticed I've, that's what I do to express myself. And um, I mean, as a man, you know, I go to the gun range and I do manly things. Um, but me personally, I just, you know, I'm okay with silence. And me personally, it's like recharging, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I sit back and I see people express themselves too much and really don't say a lot but um that's just that's just me personally sorry that's just me personally so that's just one thing I wanted to say because a lot of people don't do that a lot of people want to be seen um you know me personally I love listening to people and just watching observing I learn a lot like I'm learning tonight deuces, deuces. thank you <laughs> <laughs> And that's from a male perspective. <laughs> the floor is open. Hello? Hello? Mommy, I'm yeah. sorry. So, <laughs> I, I had this song and for the old heads, 
it, you know, I, it's a song that I love. I saw in Pepper. It's called Express Yourself. <laughs> Could you hear it? <laughs> I thought it was so appropriate <laughs> as um we were talking about this topic. <laughs> so, Mommy, you can hear it? No, I can't. You could? I can hear it too. <laughs> I'll have to go to YouTube and get it on, put it on later. That's how I'll, yeah. I'll definitely put it on later. <laughs> that's me and my corniness. That's okay. You used to love salt and pepper. You used to. I sure did. Yeah. 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 We have about five minutes left. We have about five minutes left. Anybody um, care to add some closing remarks or? Anything that they want to say that they feel like they haven't said yet? Um, I have a closing remark. Yes. Joy, it's to Joy, I'm sorry. Are you moving? Because I haven't been hearing from you. Are you moving? I called you and I left a message. I ain't message. getting no call from you. I ain't getting no message from you. Girl, I will, I will screenshot it. Okay, y'all take that. Y'all take that up another time. <laughs> it was in my head. I'm sorry. I had to say something. I just want to thank everybody. <laughs> I'm going to ask you one more time before I start thanking everybody. Does any Does anyone else have anything they would like to add before we conclude? We yeah. love you. You look good with glasses. Chi Chi. Yes, I have one more thing, and it's for Chi Nu. And if Brittany is available, you don't want them to um, answer. Any words of wisdom since you both are married? I hope I'm not excluding anyone as it married or in a long term relationship. But of course, I know in regards to just sticking it out, especially in that very beginning stage, that first three months, you can just drop some, um, you know, some words of wisdom in regards to that. Um, and anyone else who is in a long term committed relationship that's last over. I'll say six months. <laughs> I'm trying to get to three months, but I feel like okay, you got months. you got you got like sixty seconds to answer that, Chi Chi. Okay, okay. So um Sam and I have been oh, am I unmuted? Yes, okay. Sam and I have been together for a decade. Um and I just wanna say when you are with the person you are meant to be with, it should not be hard. Um, yes, a relationship does take work. Obviously, you choose to love each other every day, but it should not be a struggle. It should not be uh, something that stresses you out. Um, if you are not on the same page, it's okay. Maren, you said you'll, you and Yaya, you said you'll cut a person off real quick. Um, if they're doing something uh, that you feel like you have to cut them off for, then they're not the one. They're not your piece. Um, nice. Um, your and I'll say your partner should not be your other half because you're already whole. You're already a whole person. But nice. they should. Um, Y'all should. You, you're like it should be two pieces of the same puzzle, basically. Um, Y'all should complement each other. Uh, you're whole without them, but you're better with them, and that's all. Nice. That's all I'm saying. I appreciate those words of wisdom, Chinu. I'm very proud of your 10 years in. I'm very proud of your role model to me in that aspect. Keep doing it. I'm proud of you, honey. Unfortunately, I couldn't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> me <laughs> either, Ma. It's all good. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, but, Brittany. Brittany, um, I guess you don't want to comment on that. But anyway, um, I really, really, really totally appreciate you all for participating in this monthly conversation. I think it's so important and so healthy. Today, this evening was very humorous. It was very um, um, enlightening. It was, it was, a, it covered all the bases. It was serious for a quick minute. Um, it, it, we learned about ourselves. We learned about each other. Um, I'm sure you're going to go away and think about some things that you really want to do that you haven't done yet. If not, I hope you do because your divine purpose is already within you and, and you know, we, we are who we are. Um, we have this every month, the 22nd of every month unless something happens. And I'm not going to say nothing is ever going to happen because you just know, never know how life is. If you're watching this on YouTube or, or Facebook, Go ahead to my YouTube page and subscribe, my YouTube channel and subscribe. Push that little subscribe button because there are all kinds of videos on there that deals with mental and spiritual well-being. That's what these conversations are meant to be. They are designed to um, empower us 
as it relates to our mental and spiritual well-being. And we can only do it together um, as a whole, as a whole group, not individually, because we all bring something to the table. If you haven't gotten my book, Somewhere in a Rainbow, uh, go to my website and get it. And I also make crystal trees. Um, they're good for meditation. I don't have one beside me, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay. I'll just go get one. If anybody else want to say something while I'm walking over to get a tree. There's a tree. Oh, <laughs> who's that? Who's that? Thank you. Yeah, sure. That's yeah, yeah. beautiful. Thank you. you Thank you so it? much for that, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. right. Here's the sure. tree. Wow, how wonderful. Look at that. Look at the Make trees popping up. Woo! <laughs> Look at the trees popping up. Okay, so um, everybody, I'm going to um, close with this song that I really like. It's called Rise Up by Andre, Andre um, Day. And I do not claim the rights to this music. I do not claim the rights to this music. <laughs> I know you feel like But I promise we the world choose me. Bring it to me. And I rise up, I rise like the day. I rise up, I rise unafraid. I rise up, and I do it a thousand times again.